Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to look at something in response to a comment by one of my viewers uh, when they asked a question about the the tablet scope and they were asking was it capable of showing um, waveforms of a thin synthesizer between 10 and uh, 10 hertz and 20 kilohertz and I would imagine it's uh, you know that's certainly well within the capabilities of the scope and I thought what better way to prove that than to actually have a go. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to uh, look at the equalization section on one of the channels on this Behringer mixing desk. I'm just going to see uh, what the effect is of um, the equalization, how much how much loss and how much sorry how much cut and how much gain do you get with each um, with each control and we'll try and make some some measurements uh, using the tablet scope and see what we get to. Now there is a little bit of maths involved here um, but if maths frightens you don't worry you're in good company it's, that's not something I love greatly. Um, it's relatively straightforward maths. I've used an Excel spreadsheet to do the calculations and in the description I will put the formula that you need to put in the cell if you want to have a go at creating the spreadsheet yourself. If you don't want to do that it's possible to um, use an online calculator of which there are several. There's quite a, a straightforward one where you just enter the two voltages and it gives you the, the cut or boost in, in decibels. So I'm going to uh, put a link to that as well. Um, so you really don't need to be, be square to the maths in this one. Right, let's start by having a look at the way we're going to make the measurements. This is the arrangement I've got for taking the measurements then. Here's the Behringer mixing desk. I'm going to use channel 1. I've got the tablet scope attached to read the frequency and I'm injecting 500 millivolts here. Currently I'm doing the base control so I'm injecting a frequency of 80 hertz which is what um, the specification says the control uh, works at. So 500 millivolts in there and what I've done I've fully advanced the auxiliary send control and press the pre-fade button. If you're familiar with mixing desks you will understand what's going on there and what I'm effectively doing there is routing the signal immediately post the EQ section straight to the auxiliary send 1 which is over here which is where the scope probes are attached and what I'm trying to do there is eliminate any more signal processing or changes that might be occurring after the auxiliary send, i.e. in the faders or in the output stages. So we should be looking at the, the purest possible signal coming out of the, the pre-amplifier and the, and the tone controls. So to take the measurements then, as I say, I've got 80 hertz um, on the scope there and being injected. I've got the control set in the centre, all the controls there set central. I've pressed auto set and that's given me a reading of about 6.6 .6 volts. So I'm going to record those measurements. Then I'm going to fully advance the control and you can see it's gone off the scale so I'm going to auto set again. I'm going to take the reading there which is coming out currently at about 26.8 volts. Then I'm going to fully cut that section and it appears to be nothing there in actual fact there, there certainly is um, and we've got a reading there of about 1.62 volts. That's how I'm going to take the readings for the for the low and for the high. For the mid-range, uh, this is what's called um, sometimes called a parametric EQ, and that that is that it has a boost and cut control, and the frequency that that control works at is controlled by this sweep knob here, which sweeps from 100 up through 250, 800, 1.7k, and then finally up to 8k. It says there on the control. So I'm going to take four measurements at those four frequencies and see what kind of results we get. Finally when I do the high I'm going to go back to the same method I'm using here for the, for the base control. Then we'll get those uh, results onto a spreadsheet and look at the kind of uh, advances we're getting. I'm not going to bore you by going through all of those because I'm sure that would indeed be um, very boring but uh, you get the idea. Okay so I haven't seen how we've I've done the measurements let's now um, do the nasty bit of maths and look at the results. Um, 
Decibels is normally expressed in terms of a reference, whether it be um, dBW um, or sometimes dBm. In this case, we're actually um, just using decibels because we're comparing one measurement to another. So we're using the EQ at the center position as the um, v, uh, uh, V1, the beginning voltage, and the resultant change we get by cutting or boosting is V2. And to calculate that change expressed in decibels, it's a case of multiplying um, 20 by the base 10 log of V1 divided by V2. Um, looks a bit scary. Um, in Excel, all you have to do in the cell is put equals 20 times log uh, and then the ending cell and the starting cell reference numbers. In my case, my data was in cells F11 and E11. I'm going to put that uh, uh, that formula in the video description so you can cut and paste if you wish and if you really want don't want to do that you'll find a link in the description to an online calculator where you can just type in the two numbers and, and get the answer obviously if you've got a, a whole list of data it's probably easier to do it in Excel but um, I'd encourage you not to be too scared of that because it's um, it is reasonably straightforward after all I've managed it and uh, I'm certainly no genius. Okay, so then, what results have we got? Well, um, this is the measurements uh, got from the tablet scope. Uh, across the middle there, you've got the frequency in hertz. So the 80, the 800, and the 1200 are the three, if you like, center positions of the EQ controls. The 250, the 1700, and the 8 kilohertz measurements are turning the parametric sweep control to the to the various settings and as you can see um, first and last setting um, are about 12-13 um, dB ish and the 800 Hz setting is just above um, the 10 dB plus or minus sides um, and the parametric uh, equalizer clearly works best at, um, at the center detent there um, now, uh, what does the manufacturer say it does? Well, the um, from the Behringer manual, it says the cut at eight, it uh, is actually 15 dB at 80 hertz, 15 dB plus or minus at 12 kilohertz, and it talks about a measurement at 100 hertz, which I've um, not done, but um, that gives you some idea. So Behringer is saying about um, 800, it, uh, sorry, is saying about plus or minus 15. However, what the Behringer manual doesn't say is the conditions that that was tested under. I think, to be very fair to them, uh, my measurements are just taken using my method, as you've seen, and certainly aren't um, scientific in the in the sense that uh, they might have been recorded in the user manual. And also, the actual results of the cut and boost, when you hear them using the desk, is actually very good. Uh, and I'm actually very pleased with the performance of that desk. For a budget model, it's excellent. Now, um, if you're thinking, well, yeah, that's the tablet scope, how good is it really? Well, what I thought I would do at the same time as measuring using the tablet scope, I've also taken measurements using my Siglent um, SDS 1104XE, which is currently in calibration. And let's have a look at the compare the results with, um, with the two scopes. And the results we get, um, I've charted here. So tablet cut and boost. Uh, are still the the orange and the blue and the grey and the um, yellow are the signal results and as you can see yes there's a slight discrepancy and if you're now thinking oh well yeah it's not very good is it uh, in actual fact um, that difference between the two measurements in percent in every case is less than five percent and uh, in fact, uh, in most cases, it's about 1.5% different. So, um, very small indeed. And that translates to, in some cases, um, 0.2 of a, of a dB. So, the results that we're getting from the tablet scope seem to be verified rather well by the results I've got from my Siglent scope as well. So, there we go. Um, this wasn't really a, a test of a mixing desk it was more to do with how can you use the, the scope to make measurements in uh, in the audio frequency range so hopefully you've um, you've seen um, the effect of that okay well hopefully that's been uh, useful and interesting um, 
and we've seen uh, what the um, the boost and cut performance of the EQ sections of the desk is like. Um, Behringer uh, equipment is usually uh, at the budget end of this kind of audio equipment and I have to say I'm very pleased with this mixing desk. It, um, it seems to perform very well indeed and uh, doing the audio test on how much EQ is available there's there's actually far more EQ available than you're ever going to realistically need. Putting EQ on um, to sound um, is quite a subtle art and it's very easy sometimes to put too much on, put it on with a trowel so to speak and it, sometimes you can spoil what you're trying to do. If you've liked the video please click the thumbs up, if not you can click the thumbs down. Either way thanks very much for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next one.